How are you all of you delicious people? I'm here today to review a Chris Rock film called Bad Company. So, the interesting thing about this movie is we have a very weird concept, but we actually have Chris Rock selling this film very well, even with a very goofy concept. So, Chris Rock, of course, is to play uh, not only Jake Hayes, but then Kevin Pope, but then also Michael Turner. And so we have our character kind of running the gambit of he doesn't really know who he really is <laughs> throughout this movie. And then we also have it where this guy only has a number of days to try to perfect a performance to try to go on and fool any number of people that Kevin has known throughout his whole entire stretch of life, of time, of whatever. And so Jake is to go on and be this kind of, uh, and this like kind of chess wielding, uh, like ticket guy, uh, who of course is to go on and sell, uh, like scalped tickets and kind of see uh, what's open and what's not open. Uh, Jake is always working, so on and so forth. And so Jake is to out of nowhere find out that a identical twin brother that he didn't know that he had was to die. And so Jake is now forced to infuse himself into Kevin's life and into a guy named Michael Turner's life that Kevin had been the persona of because they of course need Jake here to do this deal with a number of guys who are to deal in possibly nuclear or just bomb and weapons tech. So instead of finding another buyer instead of going on and finding anyone else they decide to go on and find Jake's identical twin brother luckily conveniently so we have a goofy story that goes on into a lot of funny uh, approaches uh, of course we get uh, Jake going on and uh, kind of having the tables turning on Oakes, who is Anthony Hopkins' character at some points in this movie, where we, of course, have Oakes, who is to humiliate uh, Jake at some points, like, telling him that, hey, like, you need to get up, uh, like, it's this, uh, like, we have to go and, and uh, try to train you, try to have you learn a number of things, and then... Further and further and further along we get in the movie, Jake has turned things around and be way more observant than they give him credit for. And so, like, Jake kind of turns the table and is to eventually just say, like, oh, okay, like, uh, it feels like we've gone and done anything that we can possibly uh, have him do for us. Let's go on and try to, like, get him uh, into these missions. So, with that said, that's kind of the, the nitty-gritty and the rundown of Bad Company. Uh, so, with that said, let's go on and let's double five this bad boy up. Let's just go on into the movie of Bad Company. Uh, conveniently right now, this movie is on Tubi, T-U-B-I, so you can check that out. Uh, really, uh, there possibly is a number of Chris Rock movies that are that people might be checking out right now or Will Smith films for whatever that reason is. Um, yeah. So it's probably the reason why I'm doing this review anyways. So double five, let's go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about that. I figure spoil this movie. In the beginning of the movie, we of course have Kevin Pope who is doing a deal. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, Adric Voss. 
So we have Kevin who is to get it, uh, like make his way through this town thinking that he's like, okay, that he's technically untouchable. And so Kevin is just kind of walking through this town, not thinking anything is going to go wrong. And so all of a sudden we have the guys starting to realize that somebody is going to try and take down Kevin here. We see that there is a sniper that is wanting to shoot down Kevin, uh, which all of a sudden leads into Kevin trying to scramble, try to get the heck out of there. Oaks, who is Anthony Hopkins, is grabbing Kevin, trying to pull him uh, into this car. And Kevin is telling Oaks, it's like, well, hey, like, like you're blowing the mission. And Oaks is like, well, you are the mission. So... Oaks crazily tries to pull Kevin into this vehicle, and then we find out that Kevin is dead. So now Oaks, who is a man short and is the one man that is to be the negotiator in this big, huge uh, deal to get these nuclear uh, to get this nuclear weapon or this nuclear bomb. We go on and we trans, uh, we transition to Jake, who is playing chess with a number of guys, going on and doing ticket sales, and they're talking about the Lion King, or they're talking about any number of different plays that are going on at the time, and Jake doesn't have uh, certain tickets for those. So, all of all, Jake is crushing everybody that he's playing chess with, and to the point where we get where Jake is going to go on and just like simulate already what this guy is going to do. And so this guy just gets frustrated and leaves. And Jake is like, well, you knew chess is a contact sport, right? So Jake goes on and is to meet with his love interest, who is Julie. And so Julie is to go on and talk to Jake, and she is mentioning that she's going to leave for Seattle. And Jake is like, well, why? So Julie is to mention that she's kind of, she's just kind of leaving in a couple weeks that, uh, like, Jake is saying, it's like, well, hey, like, uh, like, I'll get my life together. Like, I know I'm a mess up, but, like, I can go on and, like, I'll, I'll try to, like, I'll try to be better. And Julie's like, well, that's, that's just not it. So, Julie is to go on and say that she's leaving in, in a couple weeks. And so, but Julie is saying to, to Jake, it's like, well, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk before I leave. So, Jake is realizing that his relationship is in the crapper and that Julie's going to leave her and there's nothing that Jake can do. So Jake goes on and he immediately realizes that him and Julie are going to break up. So Jake goes on and he goes and DJs and we of course had this one song is like breathe in, breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this music? It's it's interesting. I like it, but like it's just like breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. <laughs> it's cool. It's interesting. Anyways, so all of a sudden Jake is to switch up his record from this DJ. And they're transitioning on. And so all of a sudden, like, Jake transitions his record with Air Supply and I'm All Out of Love. And all of a sudden, like, we have everybody's, like, leaving to the dance floor. Like, what the f is this? And all of a sudden we have, like, one white chick who's like, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this song. Mm. And we have one, like, I guess club owner who's like, hey, man, you got to get your stuff together or I'm going to fire you. And so Jake is just, mm, I'm all out of love. Mm, I'm so lost without you. <laughs> to where all of a sudden when Jake makes his way home, we have a different variation of this song, which I think is uh, uh, Brian McKnight. Is that is that correct? 
uh, the different variation of it. So anyways, um, so Oaks and all the guys are to go on and eventually at some point pick Jake up and is to go on and have him want to go on and be this, uh, CIA agent and to perform what Kevin can't perform now because he's dead. So they give him the rundown of what had happened with their with his identical twin brother, the guy he never knew. So really Jake doesn't really know the severity of his job. He doesn't really like know what he's really getting himself into. But uh Jake and Oaks are to try to, like, make this deal. And Jake is just like, well, how much money are you really going to give me? And so Oaks is like, well, I'll give you, like, 25000 And Jake is like, 50000 And Oaks is like, what? And then Jake is like... I know that you can give me more than 25. Like, that was your low ball offer. Like, I'm going to go on and ask for 50. And they're like, no. And, like, they start to, like, they start to haggle. And Jake is like, well, I want 10 now, 40 later. And they're just like, no. <laughs> so, like, it gets down to where Jake is like, well, you're going to give me 10 now and 90 after. So they keep haggling over the price. And so, cause they like Jake realizes that he's needed desperately. And so he's going to haggle to the nth degree to get as much possible money as he can. And Oaks agrees to the payout that he will get uh, towards the end of this film. So, Jake then goes on and is to go into this CIA room where he is to see a bunch of items uh, that are all translated to him in uh, Czech, uh, the, the Czechoslovakian language. So Jake is to start reading up on <laughs> this, uh, this book. And we have Oaks, and we have uh, guys like uh, Roland Yates, who is John Slatter Slatterly, the guy from like uh, the guy who is Howard Stark in the later uh, Avengers movies when they kept having like everything after Iron Man Two was uh, John Slattery, the guy from Mad Men. So. Uh, so yeah, Ron Yates. So Yates is going on and kind of watching over the progress of, of course, uh, Jake here and realizing that, like, that he's at least studying from this book. <laughs> and so we have Swanson who's being asked what exactly Jake is really saying here. And, like, he's going on and mentioning about, like, him needing to go to the doctor or him having a period or him like him uh, going on and, and talking about like female parts and all this stuff. And so they're like, well, I guess he's studying. That's good enough. Right. <laughs> so we have Jake who gets the rundown of who he should be worried about or who uh, is who uh, in the people that he's going to meet soon and how he should really study up. So we have Jake who realizes that uh, there, of course, is a guy named uh, Michelle uh, Petrov that uh, is to be working with uh, Edric Voss. And Edric Voss is to be the main uh, dealer here who's kind of contemplating whether or not to give it over to Jake uh, as far as these... Uh, as far as this weapon goes, or Voss is kind of contemplating to give this to Dragon Ad uh, Jenkin. 
add Janik, Janik, who I guess is Jake's rival buyer. So Dragon um, is the guy that doesn't like Jake or Kevin in this instance. And Dragon will do whatever he needs to do to kill Kevin, who is actually really Michael Turner off. Because when Kevin is to go on and put this suit on, he realizes that there's initials MT on it. And he's like, well, wait a minute. Like, I've never had cuffs before, but hey, like, why is it that I have this MT on my suit? And they're like, well, that's because you're playing or portraying a guy named Michael Turner. Funny enough, when uh, Jake goes through this movie, he's wearing the same suit of MT, but he's wearing it everywhere. <laughs> so I guess nobody really pays attention to the whole MT thing and why, like, this guy isn't wearing the right suit. Uh, for if he is Kevin Pope or Michael Turner or whoever, because I guess nobody really cares. So I don't really get why they have to have initials on the suit. It doesn't make sense because it never really comes up again. Besides that one moment where they tell him or they break it to him that he's actually Michael Turner. So that little detail just does make sense. But I guess it's to just like show uh, Jake who's who he's really playing here. So Jake is to supposedly get up at five in the morning every single day. And Jake is to always complain about like... Uh, Hey, like, can I get a couple more hours? Like, can you just go on and, like, let me sleep a little bit more? And so Oaks is to consistently come in and dunk water over Jake to wake him up, forcing him to get out of bed. So we get to the point when they've done this so frequently that Jake goes on and is to mention to the exact minute when these guys come in uh and say hey it's like 459 like and then it's like it's 501 <laughs> like splashes them with water so because jake eventually gets to the point of him like realizing that he's gonna get up at like before five o'clock to just spring on them on these guys because he's just so had it with these guys so we go on and we have Jake, who is forcibly learning from guys like Seal or uh, Swanson or uh, uh, Carew about uh, kind of what, like, who they should be, who he should be kind of watching out for, uh, like, stuff in, in that manner. So we push on in this movie, and so Jake at one point, is to be kidnapped in a room. And so, all of a sudden, Oaks is to now, of course, drag Jake into this room and is telling him, like, identify your attackers. And so Jake quickly goes on, and he's like, well, yeah, like, I knew it was Seal because I stole his wallet. Like, does Seal know that uh, or does Seal realize that he has a, like, a condom in his wallet? Like, uh, does your wife know Seal? And Swanson, like, he realized that it was Swanson just because he felt her chest, uh, and it was like, yep. And then, uh, supposedly, uh, he could tell there was Haru because of the, the breath, his stench. Uh, I guess from licking uh, Oak's butt all day. And then after that, everybody just scrambles out of the room. And he's like, no, hey, wait. Since we're already up, let's go and party. Let's do something. Like, come on. And they're like, yeah, you got to us. But, but like that, like that covers most of the, the, like the scenes and scenarios and whatever. And I know I'm not doing that out of the whole slug of things. Uh, I'm kind of doing it out of order, but. It is what it is anyways. There's just a lot of those kinds of scenes in this movie. So, Jake, of course, at first is to go on and have his first test where he is 
going into Kevin's home and is to start to interact with some of his neighbors. And so one of the neighbors is actually Miss, Mrs. Patterson. And so Jake is to go on and t talk to Mrs. Patterson. And I guess Mrs. Patterson is to have this vase for Jake to look at. And so Jake seems to really go on and uh, went over Mrs. Patterson. And when Jake makes it back to his place, he finds that there's an assassin there wanting to try and kill Kevin off here, who is really just Jake. So all of a sudden we have it where we realize that Jake is being surveillanced. Jake is being uh, like earpiece and all this kind of stuff. So all of a sudden when the guys, uh, when the CIA find out that there's someone trying to get into this guy's place, they chase after this guy as well as Jake having to go and swing the shower door onto this assassin and then have him go running off. This guy is to possibly be teetering onto this, uh, this rooftop. And so Oaks is to tell this guy like, Hey, like, don't be stupid, drop the knife, and then just kind of uh, will take you in. The guy decides instead to just take his own life. And so now they have to go on and figure out who this guy was, who he was tied to. Uh, so, of course, we, they can go on and, and speculate who this guy is, which, of course, he was tied to Dragon. Or Dragon. So, Jake, after this old assassin part had happened... He is running off. He is basically <laughs> hiding away and he is consistently calling Oaks and like very upset with him because it's like, hey, like you didn't tell me this kind of thing would be happening. You lied to me. And so Jake is consistently grabbing like random like uh, like phone booths or uh, cell phones from randomly off of people. And Jake is just running around, uh, calling Oaks and just frustrated at him. So Jake then goes on and he's like hiding away. And so he desperately goes on and is to try to find any family member that is to really give him money at this point so he can hide away. So he misses, he meets with Mrs. Banks. And so Mrs. Banks goes on and is to ask, like, Jake, hey, do you need money? And he's like, well, yeah. And Mrs. Banks is just like, well, I never gave up on you, Jake. And I know at some point you're going to do something that's going to make me really proud. So Jake goes on and he's like, uh, like, well... <laughs> Like, I guess the only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have to go back with uh, Anthony Hopkins' character and just go on and do this mission. Whether it means I'm going to die or not, uh, it's still the right thing to do. So, at one point we just have Jake here who just lets the CIA find him. And so we have the one moment where, of course... Uh, Oaks is talking to Jake and we have them talking about the mission and so on and so forth and that they need him desperately. He's the only one who can do this. And so Oaks mentions that he'll count to 10 and if Jake gets in the car, he gets in the car with him. Or Oaks is going to wait to 10 and report that Jake is, is gone. He's lost. So we go on and we have Oaks that, that goes into this car and, and counts to 10. And he comes back to the restaurant and he's like, so that didn't work out, did it? And so... 
we go on and we have Jake who's like, no, like, count to ten? Who are you? So Jake goes on and says, like, you should have just told me to get in the car. And so Oaks is like, well, okay, get in the car. <laughs> so uh, without the actual cuss words here, because I'm going to try to avoid cursing because movie uh, review. Anyways, so... Jake goes on, gets in the car with them, is to go and do whatever they need them to do. And so Jake has gone on to win more brownie points. And so now the big test is that Jake is going to make it back into Kevin's apartment. And this time around, we now have it where uh, here's the big test. Kevin, of course, is to uh, meet up with Nicole, who is Kevin's old flame. Well, old as in like two weeks old. <laughs> so Jake is like, oh my God, like this woman is slamming. And the whole time, like Jake is just like, uh, like eat, don't cheat, eat, don't cheat. <laughs> Cause they're gonna go out and eat dinner and, like, Nicole is wearing all these kind of clothes that would not make sense for her to just be coming from a hard day's work. <laughs> but so, we have Jake who scrambles out of the room and is talking to Oaks and saying, like, well, yeah, like, this girl is here. And Oaks is like, well, yeah, like, that's Nicole. Like, it seems that two weeks ago, like, uh... Supposedly there was some psychological reasoning for uh, Kevin dumping Nicole. And it seems like she's just trying to win him back over right now. So, but like Kevin somehow was just kind of uh, just cut off from Nicole. And that uh, preempted a breakup of sorts. But must have been on Kevin's side, not Nicole's side. So... But it seemed like Nicole had to win Kevin over somehow. Anyways, it's a little vague. So, Jake, who is looking at Nicole and all of that body, is going on and scrambling to call this to call the phone and call Julie. It's like, hey, like you better wait for me. Like, I love you. You're going to wait for me. Like, I am making some real sacrifices here uh, for you. So, hey, just wait for me. And all of a sudden, Julie, with a number of her family members, are going and uh, making it home, I guess, after grocery shopping. And so Julie is to try to get to the phone before she does. The phone goes dead. So... Jake is to go to dinner with uh, Nicole to this restaurant. And weirdly enough, I guess Jake didn't even order his own food. <laughs> Maybe he didn't even know what he was ordering. Maybe Nicole ordered for him. Because all of a sudden, Jake gets this order of fish. And Jake is like, I, I don't like fish. No, like, <laughs> Uh, some Nicole must have ordered. So we have Jake that's making up this story about him. Well, not it's it's really a true story, but technically it's not a true story for Kevin. Jake is to mention that he is with another woman, and that right now, like things aren't going to work out with Nicole. And Nicole is just like, what are you talking about? Like, what woman? So, Jake, who is Kevin, is mentioning that he, of course, was to find this girl in New York slash New Jersey. And it's some uh, nurse. And, like, he feels like he's falling for her. And Nicole's like, man, you wouldn't, like, you're weird. Like, you're way different than you've ever been before. And I guess I have to try to, like, earn my way back 
uh, into your good graces. And so Nicole is starting to play footsie with uh, Jake, who is Kevin here. And Nicole is like, well, I guess I have to, I have to earn you back now, don't I? Uh, as if this is some weird role play kind of game. So Jake is defined that he has fish on his plate. And he's like, no, just give me a steak or something. Even though he plays off that he's like, he says he's vegetarian, but then he turns around and orders like a steak or something. So they go back to the room and come to find out there is yet another sa assassin that is trying to make his way to take down uh, to take down Jake, of course, the dr another dragon assassin. We also had the one moment where, like, Jake, uh, once he was to get his new room, he went on and was, like, ordering, like, manicures and pedicures and all this stuff. And he was uh, ordering all these, like, lavish <laughs> food items. And uh, we, of course, have it where the guys are kind of complaining about, like, I'm sorry, but you can't be ordering all of this stuff. Uh, even though I'm sure the CIA is flipping the bill for it still. It's no. <laughs> like, you should be ordering stuff within reason. So. But at that point, we, of course, have Jake, who's getting a, a phone call from Voss, telling him where to head, telling him where to go. So. We have a one point where Voss is having these guys meet up at a cemetery and Voss is, uh, of course, kind of weirded out because Kevin or Michael had been gone for a couple of days, about a week. And he's like, hey, where were you? Like, I wanted to like I wanted to get in touch with you, but like, where have you been? And. Michael is like, well, I've been busy. It's like, well, okay, all right, well, since you're here now, and since, uh, of course, Michael has uh, Oaks here as some kind of other undercover dealer of sorts, so we now have it where, like, Voss is just trying to do a catch-up here, and then he's going to go on and show Michael the goods at a later date. So we so we go on and we have this assassination attempt at this hotel, which leads both Nicole and both Jake that are scrambling around. Nicole, after starting to continue to kiss Kevin, who is Jake, Realize that realizes the uh, realizes that Kevin is not Jake. Uh, Jake is kissing differently, so Nicole is like, "Who are you? Because you are not Kevin." So, because Nicole is saying that Kevin is uh, funnier, is different, and she can't put her finger on it. But when she starts kissing him, she figures it out. So. Both Jake and Kevin, or both Jake and the Jake and Nicole are running off into this laundry chute, hiding away from this assassin. We have the CIA scrambling to go and shoot this guy down. And so what happens as this assassin is to discover both Jake and Nicole, all of a sudden we have the CIA, one of the CIA men, go and kill this assassin, which dumps basically both Jake, Nicole, and this assassin all down this laundry chute. And Seal has to go on and find this kind of uh, point for, both, for all three of these characters to drop so that way they don't get hurt. Which leads to, uh, of course... Nicole thinking that uh, Kevin is some drug dealer. <laughs> and they're not even, like, they're not even trying to, 
like say something else they're not even trying to tell her the truth and nicole is like you're not even like not even disagreeing with it with me you're not even trying to haggle with me and so jake is telling oaks is like hey like i told you i i would deal with this whole like this whole thing right so and so they go to the cemetery after this moment is over so the next step the next thing uh is for them to go on and make it to this church if jake hasn't been tried to be killed and 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 is assassinated and all kinds of stuff we go on and we now make it to this church for them to finally showcase this briefcase that has this bomb in it uh where jake has to go on and have this retinal scan being done and all these codes being processed through this thing so all of a sudden we find out at this church moment that all of a sudden we have michelle who is Voss's number one guy is to double cross him and is to go on to shoot Voss and Anthony is just like, oh wow, this is interesting. So we find out that Michelle is working with Dragon, and so now they're taking the middleman out, which is Voss, and so now it's a race over this briefcase. And so now there's this like car chase going on where we have everybody trying to say like, hey, don't shoot the briefcase because it can explode. So there's this massive car chase going on with both uh, Hopkins here and both uh, Chris in the one car and a number of these bad guys in the other kind of shooting, uh, shooting up this car. We have one of the bad guys who jumps into the vehicle and is to go on to try and take down uh, Oaks here. And so we have where Jake is saying like, hey, you're losing. Like he's just like doing like a side commentary here, just kind of popping his head over consistently watching as Anthony is getting beaten up by this guy or the reverse. So at one point they go on and they lose the case in some kind of field somewhere and it seems like the other guys are to obtain this case and to drive off with it. But here's the thing. These guys can't go on and try to do anything or sell this, uh, this bomb because there is still that retinal scan. So now they have to go on and it's the chase for Jake. Uh, to try to get his uh, his eye so they can reset this whole thing. And so now everybody's scrambling on to try and get Jake. So what happens here is we, of course, have Dragon's men were to go through Jake's records, his phone records, because when they were to go on and check his uh cell phone and see what location his cell phone had been in it just kind of shows that he was in certain locations that seem that uh that it seems like there's some justifying things when voss was to check where jake really was and so because oaks had changed the uh, the certain like GPS card on the phone or otherwise it would have said that like this this phone would have been at the CIA headquarters the whole entire time so these guys go on and check this guy's hotel phone records and find out that he had made this call to Julie and so they find out where Ju Whoa. Jesus they find out where Julie's address is and so they kidnap her 
And then they take her to be held hostage so they can bargain uh, with Jake. So this leads us to, of course, having Oaks say that uh, it's lucky that Yates, who is Oaks' superior, didn't know about Julie, or probably Yates himself would have probably held Julie hostage to make Jake work for them. <laughs> so, Jake then goes on and is to help out, uh, help out these guys to go on and rescue Julie. So this leads them to this subway station. So they, of course, are to go on and take down all these dragon men, which leads them to also be scrambling to find out where this bomb is because they have a tracker for this bomb. Because at one point, Jake is to be taken and... He, of course, was forced to have this retinal scan and by the enemy. And the enemy goes on and is to put Jake supposedly in this one van, which we find out was just some decoy, to then go on and be at the subway station to then have... Uh, Jake eventually helping out the CIA to then go on and make their way after Julie, which, of course, these guys are in some kind of luggage storage uh, place because they're tracking where the bomb is. And so now we, of course, find the bomb case, and this is on a timer. And so now Jake needs to figure out the combinations of this bomb and he, of course, is to relate every single number to either, like, seats or chess moves. So now we have this, this like, character's brain, like, in place going on and putting in all these numbers, and the bomb is no more. They had to go on and kill Dragon before they defuse the bomb. And so we had the one moment where Dragon was holding Julie, and we had it where... Jake was almost wanting to be tempted to kill Oaks because Oaks is just going to shoot Julie to get to Dragon. And we, of course, have Jake who's like, well, I'll just shoot you. So it looks like Oaks had to fall over just to have him slide underneath this other area to shoot down Dragon without him, without him paying any attention. So that we also, Jake can shoot Dragon and kill him off. So, they defuse the bomb, and so afterwards, after all of that, uh, we also had a moment where Seal uh, was to also get, like, shot, and so everybody's kind of scrambling around to uh, get Seal medication, and we... So, after this whole thing is resolved, we go on and have... Uh, Jake here talking to Miss Banks and we have Jake who at first gives Mrs. Banks like 90 grand where she's like oh my god this is a lot and he's like no I want to give you the 10 grand and she's like oh, okay well I'm fine with that and she walks off so Seal is is talking to Jake and is very appreciative that uh, Seal didn't die and, and didn't become one of those stars because, of course, Jake is to mention that any time any agent is to die, they put a star on this wall. So, like, I guess, like, there can't be a real legitimate memorial for any number of these people because you can't find out who they actually are. So, we go on and... We now have it where both Jake and Julie are engaged. And so Jake is kind of telling Oaks, hey, we're getting engaged. And Oaks is just like, well, that that's great and all. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and 
Jake is like, oh, no personal attachments, right? Like, you're just going to give me my payday and I'm going to get out of here. And so Jake's is like, yeah. So Jake goes on and he leaves to get married to Julie. And all of a sudden he's leaving uh, the wedding. And so he bumps back into Oaks and... Jake's a little confused because he's like, wait a minute, like, are you some white guy who's hiding in on some, like, black people wedding? Like, you have the, the worst disguise. So Oaks is like, well, that's that's not why I'm here. And Jake is like, well, I, I so you really do like me? Like, you're here with Swanson. Like, are you finally going to tie the knot with her? And Oaks is like, no, like, I'm never going to get married. So Oaks goes on and tells Jake the real reason why he's here is because there is a former world assassin that is to have hated Kevin. And now considering this guy is to know that Jake is Kevin, this guy is after Jake. And so Jake is just like, wait a minute, like, world's uh assassin that's like the worst title ever it's like oh my god like so, so jake is freaking out and oaks is like mm, like I, I got you like i got you and so oaks is really instead just like no i'm really here to like celebrate your wedding i would have missed it for the world here's two tickets to hawaii go and have fun and also be getting into the car <laughs> As Julie is like, hey, husband, come on. Like, uh, and so they go off in the merry way and they go and have fun. And so we, of course, have Jake at the end of this tossing these flowers at Oaks, saying that, uh, hey, never say never. And so they go off and right off in the sunset to be just married and the movie wraps up. So with that said, I'm going to get the heck out of here. Have, hopefully I remember most of this movie. Um, if I didn't say it all, this is like a... It has a very goofy concept. I would have to go out of my way to say that this is like... An okay slash good film. Because um, Chris Rock really sells it with his humor here. Uh, there's some decent action coming out of this movie. Uh, it's just one of those kind of like body switching films <laughs> that has a action theme into it. Um, it's a fun film, but it's just a very goofy, uh, goofy concept of things. So I think that's all I want to really say about this film. So I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.